So we are back in geoscience series. In this series, hopefully we can talk about many, many things about geology and also petrophysics. I'm not a geoscientist myself, so I'm not teaching you, of course, and rather I'm just sharing you what I've learned, okay? And in this particular video, we will talk about perch oil water contacts. Okay, we start with this one. Okay, when we want to characterize a reservoir or maybe if we want to develop a field, a reservoir, or if we want to conduct infield drilling campaign, we will start with a very simple thinking or maybe we, we will start with a simple concept that oil water contact or OWC will be at the same level across the entire reservoir, like what we have in this picture, okay? So this is the basic assumption, or maybe this is the basic concept. This is the starting concept that we have in mind. And of course, we will adjust later on after we obtain more and more data. So basically, this is a simple picture that describes to us a uniform or a regular oil water contact across throughout the entire reservoir. So this well here and then there, there, these five wells will see or will experience the same oil water contact when they penetrate the reservoir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In many cases, we will find phenomena like this that again, the oil water contact across the reservoir is at the same level, uniform or regular level. But in some cases, what we will face is what is called perch oil water contact, like this. Okay, so this well somehow, when penetrating the reservoir, will experience or will touch, if you will, the oil water contact at this step. But the other well will experience will will meet the oil water contact at deeper level there, okay? Or maybe we can read this descriptions, okay? I will read it for you. Sometimes a new well will find an oil water contact or OWC significantly shallower than the common oil water contact established in the wells drilled so far in the field. So here, so this well here, okay, will find the oil water contact at significantly shallower location, position, compared to the common oil water contact established so far with the current available wells that we have. But somehow, there is evidence of pressure communication between the, the new and the old wells. So the two wells are hydrodynamically connected. Okay, they have pressure communication, they share the same pressure regime, something like that, okay? So these are two descriptions, significantly shallower OWC and pressure communication between the new well and the old wells, all right? And the shallower oil water contact may be perch oil water contact, okay? So what we have on the left is perch oil water contact. And we can see here, water trapped in a sand pinch out creates a perch oil water contact, okay? So the water here is actually trapped in a sand pinch out, which creates a perch oil water contact. Okay, so now we have a bigger picture. Again, we have two wells, okay? This well has deeper oil water contact. Okay, we say or we call this oil water contact the established oil water contact based on the available wells, the current or the existing wells. But then we drew, we drill a new well and somehow this well finds oil water contact that is significantly shallower than the oil water contact that we know previously. So, 
this shallow oil water contact or perch oil water contact is actually because of water trap in a sand pinch out. Okay, so this is the pinch out, of course, the boundary. This is the pinch out, the sand pinch out. And this pinch out creates a perch oil water contact. So perch oil water contacts result from the trapping of small to moderate volumes of water when the oil initially migrated into the reservoir. So maybe like this, when the migration occurred, of course, starting from the beginning, everything will be filled only by water. And then the oil comes. Oil is lighter than the water, so oil will occupy the upper space of the reservoir, will occupy the top section of the reservoir, and oil will move across this direction. And yeah, somehow when the oil migrates, it will push the water, the push down the water, or maybe we can read this second bullet point. Normally the water will be displaced down and sideways as the oil enters. But because we have reservoir boundaries, first and foremost at the top and the bottom section here, the base, the top and the base, okay, oil cannot go even deeper because there is boundary, right? Not oil, but water. Water cannot go even deeper because there is barrier. There is the, the boundary. So water will be accumulated at this sand pinch out. The water can go nowhere. It cannot go up, of course, because we have the cap rock, we have the boundary, and the water cannot also go down because we have the base, okay, the boundary at the base. So water will be accumulated at this sand pinch out. That's why in perch oil water contact, we have only small to moderate volumes of water. But this accumulation of water, water will occupy this volume or occupy this space such that we will have shallow oil water contact at this location. However, if a barrier prevents the water from being moved out of the way, the water will remain where it is. Okay, again, we have barrier, barrier at the top, the cap rock, barrier at the bottom, and the pinching out itself is a, you know, is this, it's a boundary, it's a barrier. And yeah, surrounding the pinching out zone, there will be, you know, tight, tight rock to which the water cannot enter. Okay. So again, if a barrier prevents the water from being moved out of the way by the migrating oil, the water will remain where it is. The, the, the water the small to moderate volume of water will stay there, creating the perch oil water contact. So it's a very interesting idea, right? Sometimes a localized perch oil water contact can be found more than 50 meters or 164 feet higher than the established or the existing oil water contact. So like here and then like this so it's 50 meters okay so it's significantly shallower than the established or the current or the known oil water contact and the most common type of perch oil water contact is downward thin reservoir with downward flow of water blocked by a sand pinch out like what we have here, or ceiling fault, of course. So the most common type of perch oil water contact, once again, is a downward thin reservoir. So downward means like that, downward. Pinching out, here it is, pinching out boundary, right? And then with the downward flow of water blocked by sand pinching out or ceiling fault. Local synclinal areas flanked by ceiling faults can also retain water. So that's it. And lastly, it's a very interesting picture. It's not 
a real reservoir, but it's a hydrodynamic model. And the description here is not the main point, but you can just look at the picture. Okay, we have faults, of course. All right, and then the red color, of course, the, the gas cap. We have oil column there, quite thick here. And then the sandwich and thin oil there. And then we have at this zone, the oil water contact at this level. But at that location, we have perch water significantly shallower and another perch water significantly shallower. And this is the pinching out sand. And at this zone, maybe there is, or maybe it is shale or another tight rock, all right? That will, of course, block the movement of water. So water will stay there, water will remain there, and the oil cannot, cannot push the water even lower, even deeper. Water will stay there and creating perch oil water contact. All right, so that's all. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope this video is useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next Angman videos. Thank you.